Skull is degrading. Slow your rate. Do you read? Kneel. But even during the process of making this movie, every time I'd look at the moon, it seemed to speak to me in a different way. I think it has something to do with learning just how hard this enterprise was, uh, um, realizing that I had almost taken it for granted. First man to walk on the moon. That'd be something. Talk to me about, I think, the surprising and revealing fact of the matter that loss and sacrifice and failure were just a huge part of his story that I don't think a lot of people realize. Yeah. Neil was someone who hid his emotions, who really sort of bottled it up, um, who put on, as you say, this kind of poker face, this cool facade in order to get the job done, but who was suffering a tremendous amount of loss and tragedy during this period in his life. Neil, I was sorry to hear about your daughter. What I, what I mean is, uh, do you think it will have an effect? I think it would be unreasonable to assume that it wouldn't have some effect. It's the first time you've done a true story. Does that change or inform your approach at all? It does. This wasn't just a true story, it was also an iconic true story. It was something that meant so much to so many people, and Neil was such an inspiring hero. And so I think the more research we did, the more responsibility we felt, but also we wanted it to feel like, uh, like you are there in the capsule, you're seeing what Neil sees, you're hearing what he hears, you are being launched into space, you are walking on the moon. We tried to approach everything as immersively as possible to make it as accurate as, as it could be. At the end of the day, this was a story about human beings, ordinary people who were thrust into extraordinary circumstances and how they had to find a way to balance life on the ground with life in space. I think that's a, an endlessly inspiring story.